After such a long break from this channel, we are back with some more Dota 2 Did You Knows. In this video, hopefully you learned something that you didn't already know. So let's get started. First of all, did you know that you can look at the portraits in the top of the game to know if people are likely friends with each other. If you don't have the Dota Plus app, which lets you kind of see if people are in a party anyway, if someone DCs from a game, you can find out who's best to ask if they know them and if they're coming back pretty soon by asking the person who is next to them in the portrait because people who queue up together will always be beside each other. So if someone does DC, ask the person who is next to them if they know them, because chances are that's the people who do. You can also kind of use this to work out whether if you're getting flamed, but you know that someone else in your team should be the target for being flamed, you can kind of think like, okay, the person who's flaming me is next to the person who is, is kind of like feeding and ruining the game, but I'm the one getting the shit. It's probably because they're together and obviously you're not going to flame your friends. So you can kind of feel a little bit better about it thinking uh, they're only targeting me because they don't want to target the friend. Just remember the mute button at this point. Next up, if you suspect that the player you're up against or someone who's picked a specific hero on the enemy team happens to be a smurf and you want to know whether you should try hard and maybe counter pick or maybe you need to change lane with someone who suits a little bit better just to give yourself the best chance of actually winning. Well, once you're in game, you can actually check if this person is likely to be a smurf by opening up the scoreboard and then clicking on the player's name and viewing their profile. At this point, if you put your mouse over the trophy that shows how many games that player's played, if they are playing insanely well, but they've got like, I don't know, 50 to 100 or 200, like that's a low number of actual total games, you're probably playing against a smurf. If you are matched up against them and you have thousands of games or something like that, and they have way way less but they've been put against you and they're still picking people like tinker or shadow fiend the, the usual smurf heroes arc warden then you can you can kind of expect this is a smurf and make the decisions that you need to make whether your team hall targets them or whether you just go hey you know what i got stomped in lane but it is what it is a really useful tip to know is that you can actually counter slark by using a force staff when he leaps on you if slark leaps on you and you use force staff you can break out of that leash immediately it is you don't have to just carry on running and wait around for the timer you can use the force staff and you're completely gone this is a great item to consider buying if maybe you are like a blink carrier such as invoker and you are going up against the slark you can maybe consider getting a force staff instead this game just so that if he is actually stomping you or you kind of worry that he's going to be a problem when he does leap on you just force staff away and get out of the way that being said supports keep in mind as well if you are up against a slark on the enemy team grab a force staff you can save your cause you can save other supports you can save yourself a hell of a lot of a headache by having one of these in your team make sure to have a force staff if you are a support or a core or anyone who can carry one against the slark. If you are finding this video useful so far, please do consider subscribing to the channel as I will be making a lot more content focused around the casual players for Dota 2 and I'll also be posting a lot more stuff now that I'm back. So if you did learn anything or if you just like the sort of content and you think you may learn something down the line, then it gets up to the channel. I appreciate it a ton. If you're up against a phantom assassin, something that you definitely should want to know about is if they are farming and are doing pretty well and you're concerned that they're going to be the main issue of the game and you want to shut them down they can farm waves pretty damn easily and off your map by using blur blur doesn't let them show on the map and it means that they can farm without you even seeing them if you move your camera there however if you are paying close attention you will still see that creeps are dying a little bit quicker when phantom assassin is on that wave so did you know that if you just look at the wave that you suspect a phantom assassin to be on you can still see that she's there and you can still head over there and gank her with anyone that you possibly need to keep an eye out for this because phantom assassins will use this to their advantage to be able to farm off the map but still in lane so that people don't gank them but if you're just checking and making sure that you can see that that creep is dying or maybe one of them gets crit from full health to dead straight away and you're like hold up pa has to be there you can set up a good gank and you can get rid did you know that when you are looking at an enemy that is about to use a teleport, they will actually face the direction that they are teleporting to? So, for example, if you're a mid laner and you know that mid is going to TP somewhere, you can actually warn them that they're TPing top or TPing bottom by telling them that, hey, they just TP top or bottom because you knew this because they were facing that direction. 
Obviously, this example is pretty simple as the mid laner would hopefully TP from the fog so that you don't actually see them. But there's going to be other times in game where knowing where someone's actually TPing to because they're facing that direction can be useful. If you are going to maybe gank someone and then you see them TP and they start facing the opposite side of the map, they're likely going from bottom to top or top to bottom, that sort of thing. Then you can head that way instead to set up that gank. This can be useful in a few different places, so keep it in mind. That's it for this one though. There's five things that hopefully you did already know because you should know these things, but maybe, maybe just maybe you didn't. And if you didn't, then please do leave a like. Remember, do sub to the channel. I appreciate it a freaking ton and I plan on doing a lot more of these. So if you have any more, drop them in the comments. I'll screenshot your comment and I'll use it as credit in the next video as well. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one.